confirmed in the fact that God will take care of all of us. And we understand that there's a possibility that it may get worse before it gets better. But we are yet trusting in the Lord. Tonight I want to get you to join with me in the Old Testament one more time. Can you go with me to the book of Genesis? Genesis chapter 37. Bless you. Genesis chapter 37. Book of Genesis chapter 37. When you get to chapter 37, would you go quickly to verse 5? Genesis chapter 37 and verse 5. Thank you so much for standing as together we read the word of God. Genesis chapter 37. If you have it, will you say amen? Amen. Yeah. Genesis chapter 37 and verse 5. There it is. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told his brethren that they hated him yet the more. Yeah. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance uh, to my sheep. Are y'all still with me? Amen. Stay with me, I'm on my way somewhere. Amen? Amen. Uh, when you get to verse 8, I want to hold on to that. And his brother had said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? Watch this. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars have made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brother. And his father rebuked him said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Are y'all with me? But the clincher is, verse 5, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. In verse 9, and he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren. And they said, Behold, I have a brother and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. And verse 10, and he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. The grass will wither, the flowers will fade, but the word of our Lord, or it will last forever. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk about the cost of having a dream. Cost of having a dream. Are y'all going to help me? Now don't you leave me by myself. The cost of having a dream. Amen, amen. Amen. Whenever I think about this text that Joseph dreaming and what Joseph paid for those dreams, I come away from the sense of suggesting that dreaming is expensive. Those of you who dare talk about having a dream, having revelation from God concerning your life, dreaming is expensive. For those of us who have received revelation from God and are in pursuit of what God has shown you, dreaming can become very expensive. I don't know what God has said to you in your personal life. I don't know what God has shown you. I don't know what the purpose for your life is really all about. God will have to show you. You that, but I, I would suggest that everybody has a vision for their lives. Yeah. Everybody has some desire for what they want to have and experience of what they would like to become. Yeah. Unfortunately, the startling reality for many people 
is that they have dreams, they have visions, but they don't ever realize what they see. Yeah. The reason why they don't realize what they see is because they are unwilling to pay the cost. Y'all ain't hearing me tonight. And don't you leave me by myself. Because it's expensive to dream. Amen, somebody. You have to put yourself in a position where what you see that comes from God can become a reality in your life. A lot of people get to the end of life, get to frustrated points and places in life, and talk about what they have not experienced, what they haven't done, what they have not accomplished, and they want to point the finger at somebody else. But the reality of all of our situations is such that we determine how successful we're going to be. And that if you're not successful, it's not anybody else's fault. Come on, somebody. Perhaps if you didn't graduate from college, you can't blame anybody else. If you didn't marry the right person, that's not somebody else's fault. If you're stuck in a low-end job, that's not anybody's fault. It's your fault. Because you make the decision concerning how blessed you're going to be. Have a happy come with you. The reason why a lot of people are not successful is because they don't have any courage. Uh, the reason why many people are not successful is because they choose failure over success. Because if you're going to be successful, you've got to be intentional about your movement. I'm preaching already, but you're looking at me funny. If you're going to be successful, you have to be intentional about where you go and what you do and who you connect to and what kinds of decisions that you make. Have I got any help in here? And a whole lot of folk look at their life with regret. And at the end of the day, when they start talking about what they have not achieved, yeah. the regret that they speak about comes from the fact that they have not taken advantage of the opportunities that God has given them. Yeah. Time out, hold up. i got to tell somebody, I'm taking advantage of everything that God gives to me. I've got any help with you. Because you don't know what a small opportunity is going to springboard you into incredible success. And you're talking about the fact that it's small. Don't, don't, ever, don't ever minimize an open door because you don't know where it's going to be. But if God is giving you an open door, it represents opportunity. And if you can be steadfast in the small, God will allow you to experience the large. Have a happy day. So I have made a personal decision. i got to go on and tell you that every opportunity God gives to me, I'm going to take advantage of it. And it means sometimes that I have to release the hands of folk who want to stay in mediocrity. It means that, that sometimes you have to operate in the gift of goodbye. That you have to let some folks stay small while you're on your way to what you ain't done. While you're on your way to what God has shown you. I mean that you don't love them, don't mean that you don't care about them. But if they want to live in poverty and in difficulty, that's your personal decision. I can't do nothing about that. But as for me, I want something greater for my life. And if you want greater, then you got to get over the fact of other people not wanting what you want. How would I help you? Man, I feel resistance. The enemy doesn't want me to preach this, but you do know i got to preach on it. So when I come to chapter 37, there it is. Joseph is in this text. And Joseph shows us the price for success and the fortitude that you have to have to walk in and experience what God is showing you. Are y'all going to help me here? Now don't close that Bible because when we look into the text, we see the nature of Joseph's dreams. From chapter 37 and verse 5, in fact verse 9, when you look at those dreams that Joseph had, has dreamed, they are prophetic in nature because in these, in these dreams, God is giving Joseph insight concerning how he's going to use Joseph's life. He, he, he doesn't get it because he's 17 years of age and he's still somewhat immature. But the dreams that Joseph is having are dreams that are not just small, meager dreams. They have universal and spiritual significance.